In this edition of City News, everything seems to be heading in an electric direction nowadays. Find out what the HPD has. And the parks in Hawthorne need help from the residents. Also, we'll show you what's brewing at a local event. These stories and more coming up on City News. Hello and welcome to City News. I'm Kayla Moeller. Electric bikes are all the rage right now and the police department is ahead of the curve. E-bikes, an easier and faster way to patrol. The HPD has been using them for just over a year now. The main benefit of the e-bike is the fact that it's a pedal assisted bicycle, meaning that the electric motor of the bike assists you as you pedal, which increases your range, your speed and your overall mobility throughout the course of the day. It, it lessens your fatigue as a bicycle patrol officer. There are currently 12 officers trained for bicycle patrol and they have eight electric bikes that are used for everyday patrol and special events around the city. Uh, you, you turn this computer on and it has four different modes associated with it. You have the eco mode, which is the slowest assist that's available. You have the tour mode, which bumps up the eco a little bit. You have the sport mode, which adds a little bit more power. And then you have the turbo mode, which is the fastest mode and it provides the most assistance in pedaling the bike. The bikes plug in to charge and with a full battery, they can travel 70 miles at up to 28 miles per hour. The cool thing about these bikes is that we can get into places where a typical patrol vehicle can't get into. We're actually a lot more approachable on these bikes, so there's often times where citizens come up to us and ask us questions or things that they're concerned about throughout the city. The e-bikes are equipped with lights, sirens, and first aid kits. Officer Aksume is a trained EMT and patrols on the bike equipped with an AED kit in case of a life-saving situation. She also says they tend to get quite the reaction from citizens who see them patrolling. The, they love them. I think every time we're out there, people are actually willing to speak to us and say hi to us. They even want to wave to us. They even laugh at us, which is great to me because I'm like, hey, if I can make you laugh or I can make you smile, that makes me happy because at the end of the day, that's the type of thing I want to see in my community, just people being happier and feeling safer at the same time. Officers patrol using the electric bikes in groups of two or more, and during a typical shift, each bike usually travels an average of 45 miles. For the latest on what the HPD is up to, follow their Instagram page at Hawthorne Police. New funding has made it possible to upgrade local parks. Cedric Welton has more. It's a community outreach morning here in Hawthorne. Residents are encouraged to come out and share their ideas on how to renovate Holly Glen Park with new measure funding. It'd be great if the restrooms could be uh, renovated. They really need a facelift. So uh, the, re uh, the playground equipment also needs to be replaced and, as well as the sand. And hopefully we could get some of that foamy um, flooring for kids. I don't really play tennis, but I, I'm assuming that maybe some people might want that renovated. The basketball courts could definitely use an upgrade. Uh, a lot of people use this little park, yeah, people use it for everything and it's just really exciting to think that we're going to get some, some new fixtures. It would be more better for me now if, if there was a computer area where I could use my computer and maybe under some shade. The City of Hawthorne is applying for the Measure A's annual allocation grant program. And with that grant, we're going to try to refurbish Holly Glen. That includes probably the playground, the restrooms, and we're just out here trying to see uh, the community's uh, input and if they have any suggestions. Residents stopped by to make suggestions, many of whom were already engaging in park activities, citing their visions for what Holly Glen Park can become. We really appreciate their uh, suggestions and what they have to say so they can have the park that they want for their kids and just for everybody around the community. We're here all the time. We've, uh, my family's been here for almost 15 years and my kids grew up in this park. We made friends in this park. This is where we build community. 
and so to have a space that is a little bit more inviting I mean we love the way it is now it still brings people together but it was just it would be nice to be able to enjoy it with improvements. It's important for residents of Hawthorne to continue to make their voice heard at events like this. Reporting for HCTV, I'm Cedric Weldon. There's still time to submit your ideas via survey. For more information, contact Community Services at 310-349-1640. The Hawthorne Farmers Market is suspended until spring of next year. The city plans to bring it back on a weekly basis from Memorial Day to Labor Day 2022. There was an event brewing with some hot java. Tony Long Jr. shows us. A nice sunny day outside of Michael's Learning Place and a complimentary cup of joe. Well, it's National Coffee Day, so we wanted to open up our food truck again and get coffee out to the public and get people affiliated and interested in coming out and supporting us and also giving back to the community. Local citizens gathered for conversation and learned more about the organization. When I heard that they were doing a coffee giveaway and here at Michael's, I had to come and support them. They're awesome, awesome organization. It's a big thing for the community. I mean, it, you know, having the Michael's in Hawthorne, I think it's been a big plus for the, obviously the city and, and, and you know, Michael's learning place. So I think it's a win-win. It's really community awareness. It's also showing that our students are capable and able to make your coffee drinks, to bake their baked goods in our kitchen, to handle the register, to do all of it. It's important for society to see that. Kaylin Griffith is learning to work as a barista. Seeing everybody here today is like, wow, a lot of people here selling our stuff today. Griffith also gives a recommendation on baked goods. I think the coffee cakes is the best because they're the best sellers because I made the topping for it. Michael's founder, Ed Lynch, says there's a possibility of bringing back this event in the near future. For HCTV, this is Tony Long Jr. If you have more questions about upcoming events and programs for their cafe, you can contact Michael's Learning Place via phone at 310-297-9333. Coming up on October 21st, the Hawthorne President's Council is hosting a community dinner starting at 5 p.m. at the Memorial Center. The proceeds will benefit the Holiday Assistance Program. The dinner will be spaghetti with different topping options. It's $5 for adults and $2.50 for children. And speaking of food, I attended the opening night of Vegan Playground's Night Market of the South Bay right here in Hawthorne. LA Ale Works will be home to one of Vegan Playground's weekly markets. I feel like um, in the South Bay, there's not many vegan options, um, particularly in Hawthorne, and I definitely wanted to bring um, that here and kind of bring it in one space so that you know everyone can choose what they want to eat. With over 15 vendors to choose from, market goers had their mouths full. We got tacos, we got um, like a bratwurst, like a curry type as well, and then we had this really amazing Japanese um, pie roll. Um, it's probably the best role I've ever had, so I was really impressed. As veganism gains popularity, vendors are happy to be sharing their products. We're just here to, you know, get people a better product that's healthy. And, and, and even if you're not a vegan, you know, it's a good alternative to if you want a, a different sample of a meat, you know, that's not meat. It's just a pleasure to be here, share my brand, my passion for gelato, and actually it's really cool to be with all these people that love food and uh, plant-based. Vegan Playground will be at LA Ale Works every Monday from 4 to 10 p.m. I wanted to spread veganism in a fun way, something that's a little more lighthearted and welcoming to maybe non-vegans as well. So I think um, my whole goal is to make veganism accessible and fun. Vegan pastries were also on the menu, but what makes them different from regular pastries? Main ingredients are almond flour. I don't use peanuts. I'm trying to stay away from nuts. So I use almond a lot and I use uh, as little soy as I can and uh, vegan butter. And also the big thing that is different, I use uh, plant-based cream that has no coconut in it. So none of the creams and the whipped creams, none of it has a coconut taste, so we can play around. Aside from all the food and dessert, there was also vegan merchandise to shop around for. Vegan leather products are a great alternative, and this booth sells cork-based products. 
The good thing is that it's uh, you know uh, renewable and uh, and vegan, and it's also very lightweight, water resistant, doesn't require any maintenance, easy to clean, and it can last for many years. The event is dog and family friendly with a live DJ, and it's free to attend. To keep up with Vegan Playground and their events. Follow them on Instagram at Vegan Playground. Keep it right here on Channel 22 for these future city news stories. We'll take you to the ribbon cutting for Nyman Hall on the Hawthorne High School campus. Plus, we'll show you a few highlights from the Mayor's 3-on-3 Unity Basketball Tournament. That does it for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please call us at 310 Three four nine one six three zero, or email us at hctv at hawthornca.gov. And don't forget, you can always watch City News online on YouTube by searching Hawthorne Community Television. We'll leave you now with more footage from the vegan market. We'll see you next time.